Mariners win four to one. They take the first of the two game series against the Padres. They improve to 30 and 30 on the year. And most importantly, they end their three game losing streak. Let's quickly go over how it happened. Uh, Ty France singles home JP Crawford to score a run in the third to make it one to nothing. Bottom of the third, Padres tie it back up. Fernando Tatis has a didn't mean to grounder to first. That scores Rugnan Ordor to make it 1 1. It's all Mariners from that point on. Teoscar Hernandez smokes a home run to left to center field, excuse me, to make it two to one. Julio homers to left field, and oh boy, did he ever homer to left field. Say they went 436 feet. Seems about right to me to make it three to one. Teoscar Hernandez singles home Ty France to make it four to one. So this was a good one. This was really nice to see after the just atrocity that was that series against the Rangers. And, you know, there was, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. There were some negatives tonight. Um, Cal Rally really struggled, missed a couple of very hittable pitches and ends up striking out a couple of times. Mike Ford is not the answer at designated hitter. He is now at 125, 125, 125. Not good. AJ Pollock isn't any better. Colton Wong really struggles in his two at bats, gets pinch hit for late. Jose Caballero does do a nice job when he comes in. Lots of pause. Oh, and Jared Kelnick is really struggling right now. And I think you've got to, even in this lineup right now, consider moving him down. Talk about a lineup change that I think I would like to see. Um, in just a second, but let's talk about some positives in the pitching because there's a bunch. Uh, well, there's only three pitchers to pitch, but it was Logan Gilbert was fantastic, and it was such a nice bounce back from his terrible start against the Yankees. No other way around it. He was terrible against the Yankees his last time out. He was excellent in this one. Now, what I want to see is I want to see this version more consistently. I know I've said that a bunch this year. And really what I think I want to see is I want to see him handle adversity a little bit better than he has. Because he hasn't handled it, I think, all that well this year. Like you look at the 79 to 13 strikeout to walk ratio is, is fantastic. And if you look like metric wise, he's been among the best pitchers in baseball. He didn't even have his best command tonight. So this is a little bit what I'm talking about. Like he did walk too. Um, he only threw 61 of 97 pitches for strike. That's not terrible, but you know, it's not elite. Like, I want to see more of this that I'd prefer him just not struggle. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I want to see him handle adversity better than he has. And I want to see him bounce back like this more uh, or put more starts consistently together like this. Because those metrics are nice and all of that, but this is a results-oriented business, and the results have been kind of mixed. A lot of good, a lot of not so good. I want to see more good. I have no doubt that Logan Gilbert is capable of being a very, very good Major League Baseball starter. He is a very good, he is a good Major League Baseball starter. I think he's his ceiling is up there. I know I split this. I keep going back and forth with Kirby and Gilbert. It's it's a good problem to have, I guess. But now I want to see him especially go seven innings. It's great to see that. Great to see that after your starters in their last two games gave you a combined four and a third. I think I know you got two from Wu. I think Miller gave you four. I I'm just trying to forget that series. Yuck. We won't talk about that series for a while, unless we have to. <laughs> uh, great, 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 great to see Andre Munoz back. And he looked fantastic. Whew. Man, that guy's stuff. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. He has a chance to be the best reliever in baseball. There's work to be done. He's got to show it more consistently. Command's got to get a little better. But in terms of just pure stuff, he is as good as it gets, and he could. he's only going to get better. He's only going to get better. Great to see him back. Really, the key for him is just staying healthy, and when you throw as hard as he does, that's tough. But... 
really, really great to see him back. Oh, it was so nice to see. And Paul Seawald, you know, gives up a hit and a walk, but he gets a couple of huge strikeouts. Munoz and Seawald, that's that's among the best in baseball in terms of a one-two punch in whatever order you want to put them. And I think you will see the order reverse sometimes. But especially with Munoz just coming back, I think this was the right decision to have Seawald handle the save chance and face the more high leverage situation. I think that was well managed by Scott Service. Offensively, uh, Crawford only reaches two times. I'm doing the quotation marks behind under the desk. That does no good. Only, only reaches two times. I thought he really set the table today, and that's what his job is. That is what his job is. And I thought he, you know, he made Musgrove work. One of the big keys for this game was that uh, Joe Musgrove was great, but he had to end at five innings because he threw so many pitches. And Crawford, I think, drew like 25 of them or something like that in his uh, three first three plate appearances, something along those lines. A big number. And that's big. Getting a. The Potter's bullpen's pretty good, but I was certainly happy to see not Joe Musgrove pitching in that game. He was excellent. He was excellent. So, big game for him. Julio just destroyed that baseball and also hit a single. It was an infield single, but um, it was hit hard, and that homer was just 90 mile per hour. I think it was a slider. I don't think it was a fastball. It doesn't matter at the top of the zone and he just destroyed it man he's good he's the talent is what do you say about julio rodriguez i know the numbers still aren't where we want him to be but appreciate him ty france with another nice game and a, a big big game i think from t oscar hernandez because you saw the homer or if you didn't, you should watch the homer. He clobbers this pitch at the bottom of the zone. And then in a 3-1 game with a runner on second base, he just shoots a single thin to right field, and it's a nice reminder of what he's capable of. And that's the takeaway here, folks. This team is capable of being really good. Really good. I picked this team to go to the ALCS for a reason, and it wasn't because of hopes and dreams. It's because it's talented. This is a talented roster. It's a flawed roster. The bottom of the order is nowhere close to good enough. And they've got to start getting more consistency out of especially Suarez um, and T. Oscar. Those guys have to start hitting to their capabilities. But if they do, if they do and they address the bottom of the lineup and put a real designated hitter on this team, Mike Ford, no, you are not. And AJ Pollock is getting close to that DFA line too. This just, he, he doesn't add enough to the roster. You saw him pinch hit against a left-hander tonight. That's supposed to be his bread and butter. Nope. He's, he's been terrible. In fact, his on-base percentage is now below walks. And, you know, we talk about average on here, and it's not good to see 125. It's not good to see 150, 107. It's not good to see 161. But Wong's getting on at a 246 clip, and Pollock's getting on at a 231 clip. Now, the big difference here, I think, is that Pollock is slugging 323 compared to Wong's 183. And 323... Do not get me wrong. That is not good at all. Awful. Awful. For a guy who's supposed to hit for some pop. But if there was an obvious answer on this roster right now, I I would seriously consider designating uh, both Wong and Pollock for assignment. But there's not. So I mentioned Caballero. So he's getting on now at a 387 clip. And again, I don't really believe in it all that much. I'd be awful tempted to move him up into the up in the lineup 
They're hitting Julio second right now. And look, ideally, that's where your best hitter should hit. With a guy who can get on base ahead of him, and you still give him lots of at-bats at the top of the lineup. I get that. That is modern baseball, and that is the way it should be. However, while Julio's still going through some stuff, I would be tempted to have Caballero hitting second right now. Crawford first, Caballero second, and then Julio third. And then I would have T. Oscar fourth and France fifth, or doesn't matter. I'd probably have France uh, fourth right now. I know that's not your prototypical slugger, but he is right now hitting as well as anybody. He leads the team in average. He's like Seth. Well, if you count Caballero, he's third in on-base percentage. I'd, I'd probably want France hitting cleanup. And Kelnick maybe fifth or something like that. You've got to consider strongly moving Kelnick down right now. Super proud of what he's proud like him in control of it. Well, I'm super happy for him and that he's had a, a breakout season and then some. But right now he's really struggling, really, really struggling. And I would consider moving him to like the fifth or sixth spot. Like his, even though Cal's going through a little stuff right now. I trust him a lot more than I trust Kelnick. Be curious your take on that, but I, I I really would consider moving Caballero up. Have a couple of guys who can get on base ahead of Julio right now, because the power's starting to show up again. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Now, you could argue that you're still having that chance with Caballero and Crawford uh, getting on ahead of Julio because it's nine one two. While Caballero's getting on base, I'd kind of take advantage of this, especially against left-handed pitching. You know, against righties, I think you can argue. And tonight, it was against a righty. Caballero's out of the lineup, and he has been going through some stuff himself. But it's also worth pointing out, Caballero should not have walked in one of his plate appearances. I would love to go on another rant about how terrible umpiring is, but I just don't have it in me. I yelled a lot on the radio today, and I'll link that too. I went, um, so I wasn't able to do Molly Watt Monday because uh, of some stuff. And uh, Ian, who also missed that show, uh, invited me on for basically 20 minutes of me rambling. And I think you might enjoy it. So I'll link it. But tonight was fun. This was a nice little palate cleanser. This was a nice little reminder of what they're capable of. Because again, I do think folks, we should be frustrated by the off season. We should be frustrated by the past couple of off seasons because they just haven't addressed this offense enough. But you also have to point to some players just haven't performed the way they should have. And that's one of the reasons that you can have some optimism here because some of these guys are all but assuredly going to be better in the second half of the season. It is impossible for me to imagine that T. Oscar Hernandez will be a 246, 283 hitter for most of the year. It is impossible for me to imagine that a. Eugenio Suarez, a person who has hit as many home runs as basically anybody over the last five years, is going to be slugging below J.P. Crawford. It's impossible for me to imagine that uh, Julio Rodriguez isn't uh, more this player that we've seen since dropping out of the leadoff spot. There are good things that are going to happen. Now, the question is, are enough good things going to happen? And if you made me guess, I would say no. If you made me guess, I would say no, barring a massive transaction that I can't see. But you know what? This is one of the things that DePoto and Hollander, especially DePoto, I'm sorry, has done really well. Is they kind of have this uh, ability to come out of nowhere to make these type of deals. 
it was actually kind of weird this offseason because everybody predicted the T Oscar to Mariner thing. Everybody predicted the Colton Wong thing. Like it was borderline the f- closest to everybody predicted AJ Pollock to sign with this team. It was the most paint by numbers offseason I think they've had. And <laughs> unfortunately, one of the things you could also predict was them not going after big time free agents. But let's not focus on that because this was a good win. It was a good win. It certainly helps to be playing San Diego right now. They are um, not very good right now. That team is uh, struggling. It's struggling. And I still believe, hell, heck, sorry, swear, 10.75. I still believe that's a really good baseball team. Really good baseball team, but the, it's it's going through some stuff right now, particularly with the lineup. Manny Machado uh, not playing well. Xander Bogarts with the wrist injury. Um, it's a nice time to play San Diego. It was a nice time to play San Diego the last time they played San Diego. And, you know, that's kind of when the Mariners got right. Right? It was right around that time anyway. It's I, almost a positive that... They played in San Diego for two games during that 14-game win streak. And it was kind of like what you were like, oh, okay. This team's a lot better now. Here's hoping that's what's happening here. Long way to go. But here's hoping. Tomorrow, we've got George Kirby. Hopefully, he can build on that fantastic start against the Yankees on Wednesday against Michael Walker, who's been pretty good. Two-game sweep here would be awesome. Awesome. And honestly, a split here after losing three in Texas is going to be pretty disappointing. Not disappointing, but you know what I'm trying to say. I think it's it's not going to be good enough. They really should have had a five and three road trip. I talked about four and four being okay, but five and three would have been ideal. Now they have to go four and four. And I, I'm borderline saying have to at this point because of how far back they are. And how many teams are ahead of them in the wild card, and how many teams are ahead of them in the division? Still throwing the division away, but if you want to believe in it, so be it. This was much longer than it should have been, but that's okay. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Crawford underscore M I L B, Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Yeah, good win and a good reminder of what this Seattle Mariner team is capable of when things click, for lack of a better term.